Hi students, in this video I'm going to talk about the administration of George W. Bush who came to the presidency in the 2000, in the election of the year 2000, which was the closest election in American history. Um, as, the, as the votes came in, uh, the decision uh, of the election, the outcome of the election, centered around the state of Florida. And in the end, and there was controversy as to which votes counted and uh, which were spoiled ballots. In the end, the Supreme Court determined that George W. Bush had won the election over Al Gore, Bill Clinton's vice president. Um, he had won Florida by 500 votes, which gave him a two vote electoral college win. So this was an extremely close election. After his inauguration in January 2001, or shortly after his election, uh, his inauguration, uh, Bush has to deal uh, with the most deadly attack on American soil, um, the attacks of 9-11, in which Islamic fundamentalist hijackers seized control of four airplanes, two of which they uh, drove or flew into the two towers of the World Trade Center. Um, the towers collapsed, 3,000 people died. And so uh, this is a new terrorist enemy. Um, uh, and terrorist organizations are a new type of enemy for the United States. This organization known as Al Qaeda, led by bin Laden, found in Afghanistan or, or sheltered in Afghanistan. Uh, this was not another nation state that the United States could simply outproduce in economic terms. But this was an enemy that it was far more difficult to pin down, uh, that could be anywhere, that could strike anywhere at any time. The immediate political effect of the 9-11 attacks uh, is a wave of patriotism sweeping across the United States. Americans were shocked, frightened, angered, and confused by these attacks and they turned to defending their country and to trying to punish those who had hurt their fellow citizens. And so we see shortly after this, the Bush administration demands that the Taliban, the ruling Islamic theocracy in Afghanistan, surrender bin Laden, the leader of Al Qaeda, the group who had carried out these attacks to them. When the Taliban refused, the United States went to war and in a few months had the Taliban had collapsed. But, and this is a theme that we'll see more in the future, although the immediate war against the Taliban had been won, providing stability to Afghanistan, uh, providing security and wealth to Afghanistan, eliminating uh, Al-Qaeda from Afghanistan, these were much more challenging and American troops would remain in Afghanistan trying to prevent or trying to accomplish these goals, these very difficult goals. Back at home, the 9-11 attacks were the pretext for the Bush administration to establish the Office of Homeland Security, the TSA, and to work with Congress to pass the Patriot Act. All of these measures, these institutions and these acts, gave the United States government far more oversight over its citizens. It gave the government permission to spy on its citizens, to eavesdrop on conversations between American citizens. And many civil liberties advocates decried these measures. But in the moment, fear of another terrorist attack meant that most people were willing to support these measures. And again, another expansion of the federal government that's not dissimilar to a trend that we see with the New Deal, with the Great Society, and now with the Patriot Act. In 2002, George Bush uh, promulgated what he called the Bush Doctrine, and this was a new approach to terrorism. It argued that in order to protect the United States from terrorism, the country was justified in launching preemptive military strikes on uh, a region or on a target. So this means that if the and on and this was focused on terrorist groups, this was necessary in order to eliminate terrorist groups and the rogue nations that sponsored them. So if your government was not guilty of terrorism or planning to carry out an act of terrorism, but the United States had reason to believe that there were terrorists who were being harbored inside your country, then according to the Bush doctrine, the United States would be justified in using military action to eliminate these suspects. And the Bush administration's uh, focus 
turns to Iraq and to Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein, remember, had attempted to invade Kuwait the presidency of George W. Bush's father, George H. W. Bush. Uh, he was seen as a murderous dictator. He was someone who had used chemical weapons, what one described as weapons of mass destruction, uh, against rebels in his own country and in a bloody war against Iran in the 1980s. <clears throat> And therefore, by some members of the Bush administration, he was considered a threat. He was considered a threat to the freedoms, the American freedoms that the United States was seeking to promote across the world. He was seen as someone who was, might sponsor terrorism. And these uh, reasons were used to justify the United States going to war with Great Britain against Saddam Hussein. Once again, as in Afghanistan, the war is very quick, very well fought, very well managed by the United States military forces and its allies. Saddam Hussein is defeated, removed from power, eventually executed. But the outcome and managing the outcome, managing the aftermath of the war, is not something that the United States was prepared for. And so this meant that from now on, uh, the United States is drawn into a second increasingly dangerous situation uh, with no practical way to end its involvement in another Asian country in the Middle East. With Saddam Hussein gone, we find that different religious and ethnic minorities engage in all-out war with one another in Iraq. They have no problem attacking Americans either, and that radical uh, Islamists, radical Muslims, are coming into the region of Iraq in order to fight against the United States, who they were increasingly seeing as the great enemy of Islam. And so this means that Iraq becomes much more dangerous, much more violent, after Saddam has been defeated. Bush takes the bold decision to increase the number of troops in Iraq as the situation deteriorates. Militarily speaking, this was exactly the right decision. And it pays off. The United States is able to stabilize Iraq much more effectively, is able to provide much more effective support for the government they're trying to establish in Iraq. Nevertheless, like the Tet Offensive in the Vietnam War, it is decisively unpopular militarily. And the war in Iraq had become more and more unpopular. And this was just the latest sign that the United States did not have a plan for how to wage and how to end this war. And the war becomes increasingly popular, unpopular. By the end of Bush's presidency in 2008, it's um, pretty established American opinion that going into this war in Iraq was a mistake. Waging this war combined with uh, the fact that uh, the baby boomers, this huge generation in American society, are starting to retire. It means that federal debt is starting to spiral out of control, and this is made worse by a housing crash in 2007. The housing market, uh, which had been booming, had been booming based on faulty mortgages. Um, and so the money was imagined to exist because it was in a mortgage. But these mortgages had been issued to people who had relatively little chance of paying them off or who weren't planning to uh, pay, pay their mortgage off, but simply sell their mortgaged house again when it had risen up in value and pay the mortgage off that way. Once the market loses confidence in these investments and houses are no longer selling, this is revealed for the bubble that it is. The housing market crashes, American banks start to crash with it, and uh, along with American banks, the rest of the global economy starts to go into recession as well. And so by the end of his presidency, George Bush is quite unpopular. He's unpopular because he's blamed for these economic problems, well, not necessarily his fault, and he's blamed for the war in Iraq, which is much more certainly his fault. Uh, although we might say that it's how he's trying to deal uh, with this uh, new situation, these new terrorist enemies that the United States is facing. Generally, by the end of his, of his administration, uh, Americans are not in favor of the way he has managed the situation.